Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm super excited to be bringing you another mixed media assemblage collage. This one's a little steampunk inspired by Through the Looking Glass, and I had a blast making this. I basically used the contents of my junk drawer, a bunch of paint, and a ton of glue, and put this together. I hope you're inspired and want to check out how I did it. I'll also insert some pics of some other collages that I've done and I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video so you could check out some other process videos. Let me know which one is your favorite. See you in a few minutes. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to do is determine what we're going to build on. I love to use the insides of old boxes. This is an old art suitcase that I've removed the hardware from and it's nice and sturdy and it'll hold some weight. So I'm going to use that. If you don't have anything like that, I also have a smaller one here. Take the hardware off and use these. Use your imagination. I've used picture frames, the inside of picture frames. You could use the lid of an old cookie tin, a shoe box. You know, you want it to be somewhat sturdy though because it's gonna hold a lot of weight. So I'm gonna use this. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is prime it. Now you can either use a layer of gesso. Um, I only have white gesso at this time and I wanna use black. So I'm just gonna put down a layer of acrylic paint. This is Americana Multi-Surface Satin in black tie. And I'm going to go ahead and give this whole thing, inside and out, a nice thick cover. And this will all be covered up, but this is just going to be a good base for us to start laying down some layers of texture. So let me get this all painted up, and I'll see you back here when it's nice and dry. Okay, guys, here's what we're looking at. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, we're going to be piling lots of stuff on top. And speaking of that, let's get started. Um, the first layer that I like to put down is a lot of texture, and to help me do that, I'm going to need a lot of adhesive. So I right now have my handy dandy glue gun plugged in. I'm, I know I'm going to be going through a lot of glue sticks. Um, I also have a little glue pot that I kind of save old glue remnants in and I can use tweezers to dip my embellishments in that. So that's a good way to kind of save some of your glue sticks. And I also have some Wellbond adhesive, lots of E6000. I go through this stuff like it's going out of style, but it works great. And my good old handy dandy Aileen's tacky glue. You can also use like ultra thick um, mediums to hold down embellishments and things like that, but this is what I'm working with today. And as far as the first layers of texture, let your imagination go wild. Use what you have on hand. I love to recycle. I love to use cardboard and I'll just rip up old packaging that I get in the mail and things like that. Um, so we'll be using some of that. I have some drywall tape. Okay, now this is actually um, like a plastic, so we'll have to be careful uh, with the heat gun later if we use that, but you can use screening or burlap, all kinds of textures. Let your imagination run wild. I have some old kind of like kitchen sponges um, onion bags, okay, from produce, cheesecloth from other projects, and gauze, and things like that, okay? So, I'm not going to show you every step of the way of me gluing all of this down to this board, but I'm just going to do that. So, I will see you back here when we get the first layers of texture down and uh, show you what we're looking like and then we're going to start laying down some embellishments. 
Okay, I just want to give you some progress. I hope that's a little bit of a better view. I've laid down this first layer of cheesecloth on the back here, and I think it looks cool, and we're going to be covering it up, but good way to start. And next, I'm just, honestly, you guys, I don't give this too much thought. I'm just going to pile on some hot glue, and I like to work with old chopsticks, too, so I don't burn my fingers, but... I'm just going to put in some pieces of cardboard like that. Okay, kind of, I'll let some peek through in the back, but I'm just going to kind of rip this up and kind of have it going in different directions and things like that. Okay, so when I'm done placing the cardboard, I'll come back and show you where we're at. Okay, so here's our cardboard. I'm already starting to really get inspired by this. So I have a focal image picked out, and I'll show you that in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm just going to continue gluing down some of these layers. I'm not worried about the colors and things like that. I'm going to go all around. I also have some eggshell I forgot to show you before. That's wonderful for texture, and I'm going to fill this up, so see you in just a minute. So what do you think? This is what we're looking at. This still needs to dry, and you know, definitely make sure you dry all your layers thoroughly before you go on to the next one. You're just going to have a big mess. Um, I'm really happy with the way this is starting to go, and I've laid this central piece of cardboard here because that's what I'm going to put our focal image on. And I showed you some of my other mixed media collages in the beginning of the video. And you can see I have a little bit of an Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass theme going on. Um, once again, I'm going to be using some artwork on a card that was given to me. And this is artwork by a woman named Linda Sunshine from the book All Things Alice. And this features the March Hare and the Mad Hatter and Alice. And I'm just going to be putting this here, and then we're going to build our scene around it, okay? But for now, I just wanted to give you a preview of that. What I'm going to do is leave it off for now. When this dries, I'm going to go back in with yet another coat of this Americana Multi-Surface in black tie. And then we're going to put our focal image back on and start putting in our embellishments. So I'll see you back here when it's all painted up. Okay, guys, this is mostly dry. Um, and it doesn't matter because we're going to be putting more paint on top of this eventually. I think right now I want to glue down the focal image. And I'm just going to use my Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. And we'll put that on. And then I'll set that aside for a minute and show you the kinds of embellishments that I'm going to use. Um, I always work, you know, very intuitively, and I wouldn't be able to give you a list before I got started, but I'll certainly, sh uh, you know, point everything out along the way. So I'm not caring if this is too perfect. I would like it to be somewhat even on the bottom, but... I will be adding more embellishments around it too. So right now we're doing that. Now let me set that aside and I'll show you. I keep a metal tin inside my junk drawer. I have a drawer in the kitchen that I keep all kinds of miscellaneous things that come my way and everything from rusty chain. I'm not going to show you everything here, but bottle caps, dominoes, clothespins, nuts and bolts, empty tape dispensers. Um, just if I think I may use it sometime in the future in a collage, I'll throw it in here. S spectacles and flashlight parts more glasses and tape measures, spools, uh, bottle caps, okay, some old pocket watch casing, 
all kinds of things. I just throw them in here and polymer clay tiles. All right, this truly is a junk drawer collage, but I'll show you some other things just for ideas. You know, just look around your house. You could do old game pieces. I have, um, you know, more nuts and bolts and washers, and I have a bag full of chains, old jewelry that I used to get at the auction, and I can deconstruct that and use them. Anything that you could think of that could add texture and dimension to your page. Um, I have some wooden die cuts. A lot of these have been sent to me in Happy Mail. Um, I have some old fuses for amp repairs and televisions, things like that. My boyfriend works doing that kind of stuff and saves them for me. Look at this. Tabs. Anything. Here's some watches I've deconstructed and old alarm clocks for gears and things. Um, I have marbles and acrylic embellishments. Again, a lot of these have been sent to me in Happy Mail. I'm going to be using some of those. Tacks and nails and, you know, you get the idea, right? I have seed beads. These are great for, like, filling in spaces with texture. I already showed you the eggshells. And then probably a lot of this I'll do at the end, but I do have some bling and things like that, and uh, we might be incorporating that too. So, like I said, I won't be able to tell you until we're done exactly what I used, but going back to our project here, I will be using all of the glues I mentioned before and literally just going around and placing items willy-nilly where it feels right to me. Um, and that's going to take me some time. Uh, in the past when I've done these, it has taken hours. So I will see you when all of that is glued down. Okay, this is what we're looking at, guys. What do you think? It's literally four and a half hours later, and I have been a busy girl. I only sustained one bad burn to my thumb. Other than that, <laughs> no casualties. And I'm tired, but I really like the way it looks. So this is where we're at. And one other thing I did that I didn't talk to you about, I used some of this Tim Holtz Distress Stain in Vintage Photo. And I went over the card just to kind of tone down those colors a little bit. Although right now, with all these colors, it blends right in. And this is the part when I make these collages that I'm hesitant to go any further because I enjoy them so much. And they are so colorful. But I know that we're going to get a real level of deepness and richness um, when we continue adding the layers of paint. So... I'm going to let this dry overnight, and when I come back in the morning, we're going to paint over it again, and I'm not sure if I want to do another layer of the black, or if I kind of want to come in with some like espresso browns, or and then do black over the top of that, which is kind of what I usually do. So we'll see. I'm going to sleep on it, and I'll see you guys in the morning. I used a lot of glue. Um, I used about a half a tube of the E6000. I went through about six glue sticks, and I used a bunch of my Aileen. So lots and lots of adhesive going on here, but super happy. What do you guys think? I'm going to take a picture of it at this point, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Wait till tomorrow. I waited four or five hours. I think things are fairly dry here now, and I just want to keep going with this. 
Um, I added a couple things that you didn't see just as I was looking around. I put some more embellishments here and there. And I actually, um, inside the pocket watch, I wrote the word late and just added some further embellishments around some more of these gears here and here and there so I've decided rather than do the black paint again let's just go in with my favorite uh, Decor Elegant Finish metallic paint this one is in Rich Espresso and I love this I think I've used this on every single assemblage collage I've made in the last year. So it's really yummy. It covers beautifully, usually just in one coat. And I'm going to go in and cover every single surface with the exception of the inside of the pocket watch and the focal image. But everything else will be covered up with this brown paint. Okay, so... I'll be back when that's done. It could be scary, but I'm going I started for it. laying down this and I didn't like the way it was covering as much as I thought I would, so I am going to go ahead and lay down another coat of this black tie multi surface satin just as a base. Um, if you have black gesso, same thing. So you could also use white gesso and take it in a whole nother direction, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to do the black first. When that's dry, I'll show you, and then we'll come back in for the espresso. Guys, this is what we're looking like. And I'm really happy that I decided to do that. Just lays down a nice primer, and even this, just with the black, it looks incredible, doesn't it? So rich. So I'm going to let that dry thoroughly, and like I said, I'll come in with a coat of this rich espresso, and that will further deepen it up, and then we'll carry on. So I'll see you when that's done. I'll insert a pic now. Okay, so once again, I changed my mind. I decided to do more of a dry brush technique with this espresso. I started to lay down a thick layer. You could see up here by the moon and the sun. And I really didn't like it. I like the effect of the black amongst all of the gold. So I pretty much just took a dry brush and went around and highlighted areas. And I also did go in with a small brush and kind of pounce around on top with this as well. So this is thoroughly dry now and I'm really happy with it. I love the way it's looking. But we're going to take it one more step. And I have my handy dandy antique gold rub and buff. And this is just a metallic finish. And a little goes a long way. And I should probably use a brush, but I'm just going to use my fingertip. And I'll show you. Um, this is just like the Deco Art metallic rubs or um, Inca gold, any of that kind of stuff. So you just want to kind of lightly brush it against textures and it really brings things to life so I'm going to go all around the page oh yeah look at that butterfly in this castle and then when I have it down I'm just going to lightly kind of buff it out with my finger um, yeah, see? All right. So I'll see you back here when all that good stuff is done. This is really addicting, you guys, because you just pull the magic through. See you in a few minutes. All right, so what do you think? I always fall in love with these pieces. I can't help it. So... Again, you may say to yourself, we're done now. And I would say, not quite yet. Going back and forth, I have some watered down black acrylic paint, like super watered down. And now I am going to go over everything that I just painted up. And for instance, I'm just going to cover everything once again, try to get in all the nooks and crannies. 
and before any of that has any kind of a chance to dry I have a damp rag here and I'm just going to blot it off the surface and let it remain in those cracks. I do the same thing when I do polymer clay. I just love that antiquing or aging or distressing, whatever you want to call it. So once again, guys, I'm going to cover the whole page. I'll be back and I have one more element that I think I want to add. Um, and then we're going to call it done. So see you in just a few. Okay. I'm going to stop now because I could go back and forth for hours. Um, I'm really happy with the texture and the depth and I love it. What do you guys think? Um, the next thing that I want to do, and I debated whether or not I was going to do it, and I'm going to go for it. I have some Scrabble tiles, and I'm going to glue them. At first, I tried to use the, uh, look at my gold finger, the vintage photo stain on these, and it was too dark. So I did stain them with this sponge sugar. Tim Holtz Distress Stain, and it just kind of lightened them to about the same color here. And I thought, because you know it's true, uh, that I would put down the words, we are all mad here, because we are. And I was going to maybe incorporate it within here, you know, but I didn't like the way that it was looking, and it kind of detracted, I thought, from the images. So. I am going to just line them up down here and I think we're, then it will be finished. Um, I may put a light spray, an acrylic spray over the top of this, but we'll see when I'm done doing that. Okay, I think I'm finally done fiddling with this. What do you think? I further aged these tiles. I just wasn't happy with how stark they looked. So I took some of my grandkids' watercolors and just took some brown and went over that. And then I outlined it with my trusty Stabilo pencil, activated it with a water brush, and I just kind of, you know, aged it a little more. I think it blends in more with this picture. And we're all mad here. We're not angry. We're a little crazy. Fun fact, back in the 1800s, the Hatters used mercury while they made their hats and that's what made them a little crazy and that's where the term mad as a hatter came from so uh yeah i hope you're crazy about this project and if you are give me a thumbs up i would love that i'm going to insert a playlist of my other mixed media collages at the end of this video i'd love it if you check them out let me know which one's your favorite tell me if i've inspired you and tag me in anything you do. I would love to check it out. So I'll talk to you guys very soon. I'm only going to put a sealer on this now. I'm going to use some of my Americana matte uh, acrylic finish and just kind of seal that and I'll insert some pics and you guys have a beautiful day. Peace and love. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care guys.